Hey guys, Marissa with Legal Abilities here. Today I am interested in talking about 1099 contracts. So I know most of the positions that we have available for teletherapy are 1099 contracts rather than W-2 employee positions. And while that's not inherently bad, I think it's really important that we talk about the distinction between the two and are able to evaluate whether this position that we're looking at is really appropriate for us. So some things to think about if you are looking at a 1099 contracting position, you really want to make sure that you're as independent as possible. That's what it means, independent contractor. So you should not be treated like an employee and then simply reimbursed at a different rate. That doesn't make any sense. So something to think about, and the first question I always ask is who pays for what? If you have a company that's paying for everything, I mean like your ability to do your job, all of your treatment materials, all of your resources, all of your assessment materials, all of that, that makes me start to wonder if we're encroaching on W-2 territory. Now the um, IRS makes us look at several different questions, not just one, but that's something that if you're starting to be treated like an employee, makes you question a little bit. Another one I ask myself is, do you set your own schedule? So are you given a schedule that says this is when you have to see kids or is it pretty flexible where, okay, it's a school, you might have to do school hours, but if it's okay with the family, if you're seeing, seeing them at seven o'clock at night, then go ahead and do that. Is it more flexible that way? Um, so think about that. If you don't have the ability to set your own schedule, it may not be in line with independent contracting. Also, you want to ask, are there strict guidelines? I have worked for companies before where we had very strict documentation guidelines. I mean, I had somebody double checking my reports for me, making sure I had the specific wording, and if it was not to a T, it didn't get passed. That did not feel like independent contracting. In fact, it felt more like a, uh, an employed CF position, but I, I was well past that at the point, which is uh, kind of frustrating, but it makes you think, am I really a contractor or are you treating me like an employee? Another thing to think about is, do you have to balance discrepancy minutes? Now this is just part and parcel of being in a school where you have to make sure that your minutes are going to match what the IEP says, but are you being checked monthly or weekly to make sure that you're getting these minutes in perfectly? Because we all know things happen. There's going to be a time where the kid's sick or on a field trip or you're sick or something like that. God forbid you go on a honeymoon. What are you gonna do when that month comes and the minutes don't perfectly match up, knowing that you're going to make them up the next month? So that level of scrutiny also makes me question, am I really an independent contractor? Finally, if you have to request time off using especially an HR system or some sort of payroll system. If you're on payroll, if you're having to request time off, that really smells like an employee W-2 position rather than 1099. So I say this as a company who does employ 1099 contractors. I get that it's not always ideal, but I know that it's not always just inherently bad either. Um, make sure that the company you're working for is in a position where they can offer you W-2. Unfortunately, mine just isn't big enough right now where I could offer health insurance benefits and, and make that available to my employee or my employees, my contractors to be employees. Um, but if you're a multi-million dollar company, I think that's something that you should really be able to consider and weigh for your essentially employees. So do your research, look up IRS guidelines, make sure that you are signing up for the right thing because if we just keep signing these contracts and say, yeah, sure, I'll be a 1099, that's gonna continue. So we really need to advocate for ourselves and make sure that we're making the right decision for the right job. Thanks guys, bye.